On this episode of Game Shack, just about everybody expects Arcade 1UP to announce the Star Wars cabinet later on this week. And I ask the question, is it enough to save Arcade 1UP? Coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome on back into the Game Shack. I'm your host, JDV. Thanks for stopping by. All right, right off the bat, a little bit of hyperbole there. Obviously, Arcade 1UP does not need to be saved, at least not yet. They've sold millions of cabinets, making uh, presumably a pretty nice little chunk of money in the process, so they do not need to be saved. But that said, 2022 was a rough year for them, and CES, I think most people, maybe 90 to 10%, 80 to 20% people, were disappointed in what came out of CES. I'm kind of in the middle. I do like the way those new cabs look. I do think that they offer everything that everybody did want, but they wanted it three years ago, or maybe not so much this year, or at the very least, they wanted to hear some new cabs announced besides just the same titles that we have now seen for several years. So they don't need to be saved, but any company can go out of business if they do things wrong for long enough, just as GM. So it's in that vein that this video is sort of gonna talk about what this new cab is presumably it is star wars that's what i'm going to go with if it's something else of course you know I, it could absolutely be wrong but a lot of people do think it's going to be star wars i think it probably is going to be star wars but what variety of star wars what is the game going to look like and depending on what that game is how is it going to affect how people feel about arcade one up now going into i think the sixth year of them doing business well there's really only two possibilities right either they re-release the game that had already we've already seen on the market before or they give us a different variety of that game uh, so I'm going to talk about both possibilities, including what varieties we could see. But let's just assume that it's just a re-release, right? Let's just say it is just exactly what we've had before. Maybe they throw Wi-Fi on there, you know, so you can put your high scores online. But that's it. So same as that cab, maybe they add Wi-Fi, but basically it is already the cab that you could have already bought as late as summertime in 2022. I think you could still... Um, get that cab at Walmart, not for very long. They just kind of pop up and then get sold out. But you could get it last year. I know because I looked at it and I almost pulled the trigger on it, but I'm like, eh, I think they're going to have something better down the line. But what if they don't? What if it is essentially just the same cab? Is that good enough for people? And I think maybe it is. I mean, it is one of the best cabs that they ever made. It is an absolutely beautiful cab. You have that flight yoke stick thingy, whatever you want to call it, that is unique. Um, that is very hard to replicate. Yes, I know that you can replicate it, but for, for most people who don't want to get into building their own cabs, they don't want to mess with that. They just want to sit down, turn the button on, and start playing Star Wars in an arcade reel, or at least very close to arcade reel experience. And that cabinet gave you that beautiful, beautiful cabinet, a beautiful marquee. Most people say it's one of the best marquees they ever did. You have that uh, the, the shape. Yes, it had the riser, but the riser looked good even. The side pieces looked good, and the game played very nicely. I think a lot of people would be happy if it was the exact same cab with Wi-Fi. I think a lot of people would be happy with that. But I don't know that a majority of people would be happy with that. I think maybe 45 to 35% of people would be just happy with that. But now that we've seen these larger cabs, now that we've seen more arcade real cabinets, and now that we've also seen the kind of three cabs and less that are going for $700 in 2022 fall, all of them kind of fell on their face except for Tron, maybe people they want both bigger and they want better so let's talk a little bit about what the possibilities are of a bigger better cab well of course bigger right off the bat means taller now they can really go about that in one of two ways right they either could have have the same riser but then just put in that little five six inch extender in the the cab itself to bring that thing up to you know five and a half six foot tall if they wanted to and that wouldn't obviously make a lot of design changes because they could just stretch that out art out or whatever and i think people would probably be okay with that but let's be honest people really want to see this cab in one piece they want to see it all one side piece on each side they don't want to see any risers on this cab they want to see a proper five foot tall five and a half foot maybe even six foot tall cab that has everything else exactly the same but taller 
and better. And I'm just assuming that, that this thing is going to have Wi-Fi regardless of what happens. It really needs to have Wi-Fi on there. And we'll talk a little bit about why that might be in a second, but is that going to be enough for people? And I would think, yes, it is going to be enough for the people who want it to get in on that first generation of Star Wars cab, but for whatever reason, weren't able to either because they didn't have the money or maybe they didn't even know it existed until it had already sold out and taller is better. More arcade reel is better, -er -er, right? So I don't think it's crazy to expect it being in a five foot, five and a half foot tall type form factor. Any of these cabs that have that kind of unique setup do suffer if they don't have more than just three games on there. And I have a bad feeling that that is gonna be the case here. I don't think that they're gonna put any other game on there where you'd be able to use that, that flight yoke. And that is a dang shame because that just cab screams out to have at least six or seven games on there that could take advantage of that unique controller setup. And when it doesn't have those games, and I'm predicting, this is a pretty safe bet, that it is just those same three stock games, whatever variety of Star Wars we see, it's still just gonna have those three games on there. That's a bummer to me. I mean, these cabs are very big, they're very expensive. And to only be able to have three means that you either have to bypass those internal, uh, the internal game and kind of rip out the hardware, so to speak, and put it in your own PC or RetroPie or something like that, Pandora's box, if you want to take advantage of that yoke, or you're stuck with those three games, all of which have basically limited replay value. That is a part of why I do think that Wi-Fi could help this game out at least a little bit because at least then you could start to challenge some of these people. And I think if this cab is only taller, right? So it, it's, it's riserless and it's taller and it has Wi-Fi, I think people will be okay with that. I don't think people are gonna kind of be as upset as they were about the announcements at CES a couple of weeks ago but you're not gonna see this, oh my God, I've gotta go out there and get this cab. I just don't think that's gonna happen. So I can, let me do a little a quick poll here. Uh, are you gonna buy this game if it is the exact same game as before? And let's say it's around, I think it retailed for just around $500, so maybe about $50. Would you buy the original game for $550? Or no, that, that's not gonna get the job done. Would you buy the game if it is riserless and taller, say five to five and a half feet tall, has Wi-Fi, would you buy the game then for 550 or more dollars? Or no, you won't buy the game at any price unless it is just a steal, say something like 350 or 400 dollars, because it only has the three games. And, and I think I'm kind of in that last category. I just want something more. I have a very limited amount of space here in the shack. I have a nice little setup and everything, but the reality is I have to be very careful about cabs I buy right now because I really have a space for like one, maybe two more games. And as much as I love Star Wars and as much as I love those games, having only three games on there means, you know what you're gonna end up doing with that cab? It's gonna be a lot like Tron where it is basically art. It is furniture art that you can play sometimes. Maybe some people come over and go, oh my God, Tron or Star Wars, that's my, that's my jam, let me play on that. But when then those people leave, you don't play the game. So yeah, fingers crossed, hopefully A, it happens, because I do think a lot of people have a lot of interest in this cab. Star Wars is starting to pick up speed again, thanks to Mandalorian and Andor and you know, Book of Boba Fett and all those kind of shows. There's a, there's a desire for this cab. I just hope that RK 1UP starts to understand that three games is not is quite as cool as maybe it would have been four years ago. It's just not. All right, so that's it. Be sure to check out the virtual pinball game uh, series that I started it should be out later on this week, episode one, where I talk about where we are in the state of the art of virtual pinball. And then I get right into showing you guys how to build the state of the art 4K pinball game for less than $2,000. We'll see, we're, we're, we're getting close to that $2,000 mark. Right, anyway, love each other. Let me know what you guys think down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the Game Shack. Mwah! Be sure to visit evilgeniusentertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.